All right, writers and debaters, get your notebooks ready. I'm going to read the rest of the article. And remember, you are going to take position two, that role-playing games with simulated violence are diverting for kids. 18 squads of assassins signed up for Killer 2009, a total of 70 players, creating a pot of $360. The first week kicked off with the upperclassmen's swift massacre of the less disciplined freshman teams. There were a couple of tenacious ninth grade holdouts, though. Willis Cohan, age 15, just 5 feet 6 and 130 pounds, was gumming up the works for a team of seniors assigned to kill him. Since the start of the game, the 12th graders had been sleeping on futons in a couple of vans borrowed from their parents, the better to pull off a stoop-side ambush and avoid being ambushed themselves. They had to take Cohen out before they could move on their next victims. At 10.30 p.m. on a Wednesday, three of the four seniors, armed with water pistols, staked out Cohen's house in a blue Toyota minivan. The idea was to use a cell phone to call the Cohen's landline, posing as Cohen's teammate, Dominic, using Dominic's caller ID. The call had been engineered from a remote computer by a squad member with prodigious hacking skills. We want to get Cohen out of the stoop or learn whether he's sleeping at home. Tuck Galesford, the senior driver, said. The call went through, but Cohen's mom, who had earlier driven her son and a teammate to a kill in Soho, had been tipped off. The brownstone remained dark, and the senior spent the night on a cul-de-sac in the Heights. Meanwhile, Jake Protel and his squad, Polly Lothar, Charlotte Estelle, and Mark Croderu, mowed through entire teams, racking up 13 kills in four days. In five hours on Memorial Day, Lothar, a member of the winning teams from 2007 and 2008, shot a boy sitting on his stoop in Borham Hill, a second as he ventured from his country house to Cabo Hill, and a third whom he duped into coming to a party in the village. Willis Cohen was finally killed through no fault of his own. He woke up and, as usual, hopped a neighbor's fence and exited through a neighbor's house. He caught a cab on Amity Street and headed north to the Heights. He knew he was in trouble when his driver refused to raise the windows. A member of the Gaysford team shot him in the chest through the cab's passenger side window as he pulled up to the school. I told the driver to pull over to the other side of the street, but he wouldn't do it, Cohen said, the wet splotch drying in the center of his t-shirt. In the end, the Protel Lowther team won with 21 kills. They celebrated with a spaghetti dinner. In the late innings of killer season, some kids occasionally sleep in the deeper recesses of St. Anne's itself. The game's valedictory message is built into the architecture. School is the safe ground, and keen as the graduating seniors may be to leave, the game tells them what the world outside is not. Okay, debaters, this time, since you're arguing more academic, sophisticated positions, why don't you take a minute or two to rehearse? But let me give you a few tips. Maybe you can lead into your argument with a mini introduction. Try that out if your points are clear. And how do you want to end? Think about that. Can you finish with a bang and really make your case? After you're done rehearsing, then you can get to it by stating your position clearly. And remember, you have one minute. All right, go for it. Pause the video while you work on this. Debaters, let's name the work that you just did. You took a position and you used it as a lens to collect evidence from a source. You reflected on and ranked your evidence, and then you thought hard about your position, the available evidence, and how to make some key points that would support your position. Then you defended this position using the best reasoning and evidence you could assemble. You also went from a preliminary, simple pro-con debate to arguing more academic points of view, ones where you had to define your term. I know that you might be dying to argue the opposite point of view, 
or you might have been uncomfortable with the point of view you defended, which means you should try the other side to stretch your argument muscles and see what new thinking you can come up with. And that's exactly what I want you to do during your writing time today. First, switch positions. Second, go back to the text and gather evidence for your new position, making sure that you annotate as you go along. Then third, compare and sharpen your positions. You might want to do this with someone else who shares your point of view. Then fourth, defend your position. All right, debaters, off you go.